Rain has stopped falling along parts of the Texas Gulf Coast, but not before breaking a tropical storm record. The disaster deepens as people in the storm's path deal with more than 50 inches of rain. On the scene, on the story, News on 6 starts now. Good evening. As rescuers work around the clock, those people who have already been rescued are running low on resources. News on 6 has crews spread out along the Texas coast, and we begin our team coverage tonight with News on 6 anchor Craig Day live outside of Houston with the latest. Craig? Well, Terry, the good news is the rain has stopped here. Everybody is relieved about that, but the bad news is that the danger isn't over yet. There's still rising water because of all the runoff that we're getting in the area. Oklahoma is sending additional resources to the, the Texas Gulf Coast to help out with these relief efforts, including more swift water rescue teams. In fact, those teams are coming from the Bartlesville Fire Department, from the Cherokee Nation, from also Cherokee, Wagner, and Craig counties as well. So that will make 20 swift water rescue teams either in South Texas or on the way coming from Oklahoma. Now, as for the folks who live here, much of their focus tonight is just trying to get by during what's been a terrible, terrible week. With submerged cars and water rescues still ongoing, the flood water remains the biggest concern. The water was like, like, uh, like five feet in my house. We're all still in shelter. <laughs> but a secondary worry for many people be my next group right here, okay? is just having enough groceries and other supplies. Most stores are closed, but Target in the Woodlands has reopened. This is nuts. Yeah. Now we're running low on everything, and grocery stores aren't open, and. <laughs> Woo, target opens. <laughs> there are so many people who need to stock up. Lines are long. The store is only able to handle a limited number of customers. 30 are allowed in at each time. It's rough. This is the worst ever. <laughs> But luckily in our neighborhood, we're still not flooded yet. But no one minds the wait. Some are locals, some are volunteers from out of town. All are just glad the store is open as they face several more days of rain and devastation. And we've also seen a couple of gas stations, several gas stations in the area where gas is in short supply because the big tanker trucks are simply having a hard time getting to many of the locations, not just in this community on the northern edge of the Houston metro area, but also in other parts of this particular re region. A green country native living in Texas is now safe back in Tulsa with her daughter and grandkids tonight, but her son is still stuck in Texas and that's causing a lot of worry for her. News on Six's Justin Schreer is on that story. Crystal Boyd is trying her best to make sure her house and her son are all okay while being thousands of miles away from home. At noon I left work, by 1.30 I was on the road. Tulsa native Crystal Boyd lives outside Houston in Katy. She managed to get out of Texas Friday before Hurricane Harvey. She was able to take her grandkids and her daughter and is staying with her sister. It is a roller coaster ride. I mean, with the water, it's up and down. It's like, okay, it's creeping towards your house. But she had to leave her son behind, who is in a community corrections program facility in Humble, Texas. To make matters worse, she says one of her son's friends called her to say residents from another facility were brought in and her son says they were causing problems. It scared me to death and I'm like, you know, number one, there's flood waters coming in. Is my kid safe? Are they going to be able to evacuate them? The Harris County Community Supervision and Corrections Director says their downtown facility was evacuated due to flooding and those people were placed in the humble location. She says there were five people who were acting out. They were arrested and no one was hurt. I can tell you that I have been blessed in this life and uh, whatever happens, I'll make it through. I can rebuild my house. You know, the biggest thing is, you know, if my kids, my grandkids are safe, and my family's safe, that, that's the biggest blessing. In the meantime, Boyd says she's praying. God has a plan for us and uh, he's going to take care of that. Boyd says at the moment her house is safe, but she does not know when she will be able to return home. Justin Schreer, News on 6.
And I want to show you again, the danger is still very real here tonight. You can see how high the water is on the cab of that big rig. And we've seen a number of vehicles that are just left abandoned right now. We talked to an insurance uh, person who is from Tulsa and their company specializes in taking care of these types of vehicles. And of course, they got in early, early this morning and were up early this morning, I guess I should say. And they're hard at work uh, throughout the day today identifying the locations of those damaged vehicles. We will have much more uh, coming up a little later in this newscast. For now, on the scene, on the story in the Woodlands, Texas, Craig Day, News on 6. More Oklahomans are answering the call for help tonight. The Oklahoma Air National Guard 137th Special Operations Wing is sending medical equipment and medical personnel to Texas. They specialize in transporting patients from hospitals during disasters. Their planes are taking off every few hours from Oklahoma, sending more help with each flight. Well, President Trump today toured some of Harvey's damage in Texas. That storm has dumped around 50 inches of rain in some areas, and that set a new New U.S. record. Kenneth Craig is on the scene in Houston where emergency workers are scrambling to rescue and shelter evacuees. Harvey is still not finished with Texas. Rescue crews are working around the clock to bring more evacuees to safety. There's no way in and out our neighborhood. We can't get food, no electricity, about a day now. Volunteers and first responders have plucked more than 6,000 people from rising floodwaters. A levee near Houston also breached this morning, sending more water into neighborhoods. A boat got to these people stranded on top of a pickup truck just in the nick of time. The death toll from Harvey is rising. Sergeant Steve Perez, a Houston police officer, was killed when he became trapped in floodwaters on his way to work. We couldn't find him, and uh, once our dive team got there, it was too treacherous to, to go under and look for him. Thousands of storm evacuees are crowding into Houston's downtown convention center. It will be an extended period of time, but we will be here for folks as long as they need us. Evacuees are still coming here to the convention center, even though it filled up within hours after opening. The mayor is now asking FEMA to open another shelter that can accommodate 10,000 evacuees. We're not turning anyone away, um, but it does mean that we need to expand uh, our capabilities and our capacity. President Trump traveled to Corpus Christi for a briefing on recovery efforts from local and state officials. This was of epic proportion. The tropical storm is back over the Gulf and is expected to make a second landfall tomorrow just east of Houston. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, Houston. has been such a historic event, shattering records. We'll be talking more about that in full weather. I do want to show you right now where the Eye of Harvey is located out over the Gulf. Right now that is to the south and to the east of Houston. The rain has moved out of Houston today before the sunset. There was actually some sunshine in the Houston area for the first time since Thursday evening of last week, but the heavy rain is moving into Louisiana. There have been several tornado reports in that area. I do want to check in with our own Darren Stevens, who's been out actually doing several water rescues today. Darren, we're going to show some of your video. Can tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, Lacey, um, Vaughn and I both have been out on the sea do all day long with rock water rescues. Um, there are people that are uh, coming out, uh, especially in the Buffalo uh, Bayou area, that the, the water is continually rising. So we've been over there most of the day helping facilitate and actually transporting some of those victims uh, in and out of there. But it, that's a scene over there that's going to be ongoing. One thing that I want to report to you that I hope that I'm the first one is that here this evening in Houston, we have stars out tonight. You know, so that's a little bit of good news because things are going to beginning to dry out, Lacey, back to you. Oh, that is amazing news. Such a blessing. I'm sure the starlight is one of the best things they've seen in Houston in a very long time. Of course, we're quiet across Oklahoma. We have a cold front headed our way after a hot Labor Day. That forecast is coming up. All right, thank you, Lacey. And you can find more of our storm coverage right now on our News on 6 app. Also, stay tuned for more from our team covering Harvey's Path of Destruction.